Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. Today on the channel, I'm with Louis from My Energy, and we're talking about how you can gain energy independence by getting a solar panel system installed. So let's get to it. So we've talked all about portable solar panel systems on the channel before, just like these here. But in today's video, we're gonna be talking about larger home-based systems. If you want a special discount code on items like this, stay tuned till the end of the video. All right, guys, so we are in the My Energy boardroom with Louis, who is project manager. Uh, division manager here of residential, industrial, and commercial systems at My Energy. That's a much longer title. Yeah. I can remember. I'm glad you said it because I can remember that introduction. Uh, so we're here today because of all the things going on in the world, the energy crisis right now, everybody is scrambling into solar and renewables. Everybody for different reasons. It doesn't matter what side of the political spectrum you're on. Some people are doing it because they want to be, you know, eco-conscious and pro-environment. Other people are just doing it because they don't like the government and they want to go off grid, right? They yeah, don't want to pay any, they yeah. want to be independent. So it's, it's really a, a technology that unifies all preppers of the political spectrum. You know, if I was, you know, a guy with a wife and two kids and a couple dogs, what would I need to power my home? Yeah, there's a lot that goes into that. Uh, the first thing you'd want to look at um, if you were looking to get a solar system is we want to see your power bills. But for a typical system on a home in, in a city, you know, you'd be looking at the five to 15 kilowatt size range on your house roof. Price range would be from 15 to low 20s, $20,000 for a system that size. Is there other benefits, like if you're putting these on your roof, how does that affect like the shingles and the, the roofing? Typically we'll, we want new customers to have their roof done recently within the last five years um, when we do put solar on because you have to take them off to redo the roof if, if that were ever the case. But an advantage of having panels on your roof is they do protect it from the elements. No sun hits your roof where the panels in, are installed. Uh, they can withstand hail. We've never had a broken panel from, from weather damage. So they're very resilient. You see pretty, well, you're using them as a table, so yeah, I yeah. presume that they're pretty good. Yeah. Have you noticed any uh, supply chain issues with access to solar panels and all the various circuitry that goes into it? Big time. Uh, the major impacts have been around steel um, with everything happening in Russia and Ukraine. We had some limitations and, you know, some lead times were doubling on some of our racking components. Big impacts with that. Um, and then throughout COVID, of course, um, the Suez Canal affected us um, in terms of supply for panels because we get lots of stuff coming through there. And it's still impacting us right up till now. Uh, major electrical components have had some pretty major delays, doubled some of those lead times. So. And what are the lead times that you're seeing right now? Yeah, so for a typical homeowner, um, things are still fairly accessible um, for solar systems. You'd be looking at six to eight weeks kind of lead time on most of the components. Yeah. Um, it's more when you get into the larger projects, when you got big transformers and, you know, thousands and thousands of panels that you're installing that we've seen the major delays. Roof or ground? Uh, Depends. Yeah. <laughs> if you have space for a ground mount, it's ideal because you can have the optimal angle right, and an optimal orientation, south facing, solar south facing at 30 degrees is ideal for Saskatchewan, but it depends where you live. Um, you can set that up exactly um, how it's recommended for where you live, whereas on a roof you're limited to the slope of your roof and the orientation of your roof. So mm -hmm. if you have space for a ground mount without shading affecting you, then ground mount all day. All right, so what kind of panel do we have here? This is a monocrystalline panel. So. There's kind of two main types. There's mono and poly. Poly are cheaper to make. Uh, production's not quite as good. Mono, a bit more expensive, but you get more production for your square footage of panel. Other than that, you can get a split cell panel, which uh, performs a bit better when there's shading in the area. Um, and you can get those mono or poly as well. So there's split cell, poly, mono. Mono is best. And if you can get mono split cell, that's ideal. Of course, price goes up with that. What I would look for to know if something's mono or poly is uh, you can kind of see the cells here, how they're arranged. On a poly one, they'll be kind of more random the way they're arranged on the panel, but here you can see how clean those are and, or and, and well organized they are. So that, that would be the simplest way to tell the difference. So on our, on our roof mounts, typically, we use optimizers, uh, power optimizers on each panel so that 
you're actually, in, rather than if you have like an inverter you're plugging into, if you get shading on one panel, that whole string of panels will lower their production. So if you have optimizers, then each panel is kind of monitored individually so that if you have a bit of shading on one panel, uh, the rest in that string will still perform optimally. So how much uh, power could a panel like this generate? So these I believe are 325 watt panels. Um, so that's what these would produce. Uh, these are typical roof mount ones. We like to go all black just for that sleek look on, on roofs. What about like maintenance? That's my, one of my biggest concerns is if I get a solar panel system and I live in a dusty environment or you know a rainy environment, how many times am I gonna have to go out and wash it and maintain it? And what effect is that gonna have on overall output? Yeah, so pretty minimal maintenance on a solar system. Um, obviously up here in Saskatchewan, if you get a bunch of snow sitting up there, as soon as the sun, sun comes out, it starts to melt off. These attract heat, right? So we'll, we'll recommend sometimes, you know, a couple times in the summer to give them a rinse, your panels, if you want optimal output, but you don't need to. Dust has a, a pretty small effect on production for them. Uh, they perform better in the cold, which is an advantage to us up here in Canada. It's a small difference throughout the seasons, but you have less sunlight hours in the winter. So then having the cold, it kind of helps you get that extra production. The nice thing, uh, if you have a ground mount system, uh, we do install bifacial panels. So you've got snow in behind the array, then you have the sun reflecting off the snow onto the backside of the panels. You get that extra production um, wow. from that reflection. Never heard of that. Here in Saskatchewan, for as long as I can remember, we had a net metering program where anything that you overproduced would go back to the grid and you would get a credit for you know one kilowatt hour back to the grid you get a kilowatt hour credit on your bill and then you can use that in the winter months they've reduced that to half a credit now so it's it's less of an advantage to feed back to the grid throughout the summer because you're only really recuperating half that power um, so look into what programs are in place where you live lots of places do have what they call true net metering where it's that one-to-one -one credit for what you send back so I come to you, I say I want to set up a solar system. Do I have to go through some kind of licensing or does the government have to approve it or how does that work? Yeah, so here, here it does work that way. We actually do all, I know, <laughs> here we actually have, we do the submissions for our customers. So, okay. you know, you'd come in, buy a system from us and then we start all that application process. Yeah. They approve it, you sign a contract to feed back into, onto the grid and then uh, they add those credits to your account as you, as you accumulate them. So obviously a solar system is not just comprised of the solar panels, you also need an inverter and a battery. So what else can a person expect to have in their home or should they make space for if they're wanting a solar system? Yeah, so these here are inverters that we'll typically install on a home. Um, solar edge inverters. You'd either put these near or in a mechanical room in your home. Lots of people have them in their garage. Um, they're actually outdoor rated as well, so you can put them on the outside of your home, but a lot of the time people do like having them indoors near their mechanical room. Would I need just one of these for my home or would I need Yeah, multiple? for a home you'd have one even smaller than this. Okay. Um, you'd have something like a, like a 5 to 10 kilowatt inverter at your home. And uh, so what's the difference between this kind of inverter and that one you see over there? So they're very similar. They do the same function, right? They're converting DC power to AC power so that that's what your house uses. All your appliances use AC power. These ones we typically use on ground mounts. They're just tougher build, uh, better for because they're left outdoors at the array itself. Okay. We actually mount these on the back of so the ground mounted array. So that's exposed to wind, rain, snow, everything. everything. Yeah. Yeah, we've got an 88 kilowatt system here. That's pretty sizable. Yeah, it covers the whole south side of our roof here. Earth's we've got 60 kilowatts worth of inverters here. You always want to okay. oversize your DC to AC ratio. Inverters perform best when they're close to peak capacity. For as long a periods throughout the day, you want to be close to that peak capacity on your inverters because these are kind of your critical component of your system. The most expensive, you want these to be performing optimally. And now what about batteries? I don't know if you know a lot about that. Yeah, so we, we do install Tesla power walls. Uh, like you mentioned, those are hard to get here. Big lead times, but uh, yeah. we have installed quite a few of those already. Um, Generac batteries we've installed as well those are a lot easier to get your hands on that's lithium yeah, yeah those are lithium okay yeah 
what they're best for is, especially with uh, if you're not on a net metering program like I was mentioning, they're best for storing energy when you're not using it, deploying it at night, right? When So just on a day-to-day -day cycle, you're optimizing when you're using that solar power. Otherwise, it's hitting the grid and you're only getting a partial credit for what you're sending back. So what are some uh, common misconceptions about solar? Because it's very important that people know what they're getting, what it can and can't do. A really common one that we see is people expecting um, to be able to solar power their home in case of an emergency when they don't have batteries. Um, your inverters are grid tied. So as soon as they're not getting anything from the grid, uh, they have a safety protocol to shut down. So if you don't have battery backup and aren't set up for off-grid, the solar is not going to power your home during an outage. That's one of the most common things we see. So with respect to tying into the grid, like if I have a solar system at home in the city and I'm tied into the grid and I have a battery backup, can I still use it if the grid goes down? Yes, so you can. There's some specialized equipment that you need to get for that a transfer switch where it transfers you over to only battery backup and solar. So yes, it's possible. Perfect. So with the flick of a switch, I can be free of the government's tyranny. You betcha. Perfect, <laughs> that's what we like to hear. Awesome. Is there any more uh, things that people should maybe watch out for? Because I was watching this documentary and you know, these guys were over promising in terms of you know, how much money you're gonna save and this and that. Uh, what would you advise you know, people to look for because obviously, clearly, you guys are running an honest operation, I can tell that, but if somebody's in the market for something like this, what are some things to look out for? So the thing that I would look at is what they're promising in terms of kilowatt hours per kilowatt of power. So just a rough number for a ground mount around you know 1,500 kilowatt hours per kilowatt of power per year. Anything way above that, they're kind of out to lunch. So I would take ask them what their numbers are for kilowatt hours per kilowatt of power, and then vet that with a few other companies, look it up online, see how it compares to other numbers you're seeing. That'll kind of tell the tale of whether they're over-promising or not. Now, what is the longevity of these panels? Yeah, so panels have, uh, depending on the manufacturer, you'd be at like 20 to 30 year um, performance guarantee, where by year 25, depending on the type of panels, um, they'll guarantee 80% production still out of those panels so they should still be performing at 80 percent of their original output by the end of that term so just like lithium batteries they don't just suddenly stop working no. they slowly degrade over time yeah exactly and they're still useful at the end of that life maybe give me some insight as to why people should choose solar this day and age yeah so right now is a really good time for solar um, I mean, locally here in Saskatchewan, we have a few programs that are really good for, for making it more affordable, um, kind of decreasing that gap in uh, energy poverty throughout the province. So lots of opportunities right now for, for some rebates through the federal government. You're looking at anywhere from a 10 to 15 year payback on a system, but throughout those 10 to 15 years, you're paying less on your power bills and there's some low interest financing options through the government that we can take advantage of right now. Then once it makes economic sense, you get more people interested. Um, like you said, you have people who are doing it for environmental reasons, but at the end of the day, it needs to make sense economically for people to be getting these solar systems. Yeah, and I mean, our viewers are from all over the world, so you yeah. guys are really gonna wanna look into like for these sort of uh, rebates or tax breaks or whatever the case might be, uh, you're really gonna wanna you know, do your research. Uh, right now you're saying there's a $5,000 federal government? Yeah, Canada Greener Homes Grant is what that one's called. And they right. actually just announced a program in conjunction with that uh, called the Canada Greener Homes Loan Program. Mm -hmm. So that, that people who are eligible for the grant for $5,000 can also get up to $40,000 interest-free loan. Mm -hmm. So. For, for installing uh, uh, home energy retrofits. So. And for me, solar is kind of multifold in its benefits. Because on the one hand, you know, even if you weren't to save any money on it, from a prepping standpoint, it's like an insurance policy. So it's like if there was, you know, if the grid went down or Russia started, you know, throwing nukes at us, you know, if something happened, at least you have insurance. But on top of it, from a, a pragmatic point of view, you're actually saving money 
because you said 10 to 15 years payoff. I've heard people in California where they obviously get maybe a bit more, you know, longer days than us all year round and sunny days, but that people are paying off their systems much quicker than that, like yeah. four or five years type thing. <clears throat> so that, that payback period is based on current rates too. Yeah. So, you know, what we've seen with energy happening recently, prices are going to keep climbing and that payback period keeps coming down. So. All right, guys, so if you guys want to know more about my energy, if you are in Saskatchewan, you guys service the entire country. Yeah, we do. Much. Yeah, we're yeah. across Canada. We're For, out in Prince Edward Island all the way to Alberta right now. Yeah. Nice. So if you, you know, you have a big project in mind, uh, contact these guys at the real deal. They'll get you what you need, get it done. And also go check out their YouTube channel. Uh, I don't think you only have like 26 subs right yeah. now. So let's uh, get them yeah. to 1,000 subs. And it's only, I mean, it's more so like showing the work that you've done. Yeah, so, showcasing some of the projects that we work on. Yeah, yeah. and some really good, uh, really good camera work there too. I was kind of envious of uh, not saying anything bad about the communist <laughs> cameraman. I see him kind of, yeah, he's giving me the finger right now. But, uh, you know, it's... You got to recognize that professionalism when you when you see it all right guys so go check out the youtube channel if you like this video like comment subscribe and if you have any questions post them in the comment section below and i'm hoping that louis or somebody who works here will help answer those questions all right stay safe thanks for watching canadian prepper out the best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at canadianpreparedness.com where you'll find high quality survival gear at the best prices, no junk and no gimmicks. Use discount code prepping gear for 10% off. Don't forget the strong survive, but the prepared thrive. Stay safe.